a while back I bought this new um, Craig miter gauge system and I uh, really haven't had time to do anything because I've been working in the garden but it's real hot today so I decided to come in uh, spend a little time in my shop and my wife got a new counter and uh, appliances and I got the points off the credit card so um, it was an even trade and uh, I decided to order this from Home Depot and um, you know, I wanted to upgrade the miter gauge on my Grizzly saw, uh, the one that came on it. I'm planning on moving that over to the new band saw, so, um, you know, I have a new home for that one. And I just figured I'd like to get a little bit higher quality miter gauge, so I ordered one of these to try. Um, Home Depot just slapped a label on the box and shipped it like that. Uh, it came real quick, and um, you can see it's packed well. It's got a... Uh, long aluminum extrusion there that's uh it's about 25 inch long or 24 inch long extrusion for holding your wood um it's got the miter gauge bar and um it's got uh it's all aluminum it looks like even the bar for the miter gauge is aluminum and it comes with a handle and a bunch of hardware kits and a uh, stick on tape measure and you know all the all the little nuts and bolts required and I've had real good luck with Craig Tools before, so I just figured I'd give this one a try, you know, because of the amount of the gift card that I had gotten anyway, so. Now everything was packed well and comes with a nice stop and everything else and really a nice instruction book of how to put it together now. I've never needed instructions for a miter gauge before, so um, this is something new to me. Um, basically, there's a brass pin that drops in there that supposedly... Um, precision lines it but we'll talk about that later and then there's just a handle with a um, nylon washer that goes goes in there to tighten everything down and then if you have the uh, the t-slot in your saw you put that little adapter on the bottom there with a flathead screw that comes in the kit and you just um, put that to the bottom there and tighten that down and then uh, this kit comes with a bunch of nylon set screws that actually remove all the play from the um, the bar any play that there is between the bar and your slot in the table um, they're just a uh, black nylon set screw they don't seem to have Loctite or anything on them so I'm not quite sure you know how they're gonna last or you know how they're gonna work out but um, you have to just uh, insert them into the threads that go right through the gauge there and you need a, a fairly narrow screwdriver um, my screwdriver wouldn't screw right through the uh, clearance hole in there for the thread so I had to take it over to the belt sander and just just take enough off so it would um, you know fit through that uh, that tap drill hole that's in there so once I did that I was able to um, you have to drive them through about a eighth of an inch and I just uh, screwed them out until they were flush with the opposite side there now there's um there's five of these that actually um kind of engage and disengage as a bar slides through the saw so um never had a set set up like this before uh we'll see how it works so you basically have to take and adjust each one uh slowly you have to um in order to take the play out it actually sticks out the side of the miter gauge so you just have to keep fiddling with them one at a time until you uh, get them so that, you know, they're, they're just moving uh, smoothly and they actually remove all the play. So that takes a little while and there's nothing to lock them in place or anything. So I'm not sure if you're going to have to um, adjust them every once in a while. Plus I had a little bit of a problem with the um, that casting on my saw, those front edges of the slot there. Um, they actually were they were ground to a um, a perfect square edge, um, and I'll show you in a second what I had to do. But there you can see it's just a matter of taking the five screws and um, once you get them adjusted right, there is zero play in it, so it does you know it does seem to work good and um, you know take all the play out and stuff. So I got that that all set nice and tight and there's what I'm talking about there was a real sharp edge there on that side that was um, actually kind of scraping the edge off those nylon screws as they went past it so what I did is I just took a little diamond file there and just filed a little chamfer on there so that they'd engage without you know hanging up or anything then that uh, 
that extrusion that goes on a miter gauge has some little nylon buttons that you're supposed to be able to push in. Um, I couldn't push them in, so I used a little tack hammer on them. And they said to put one on each edge, and then um, you're supposed to put four on it, but they gave me six, so I put uh, one one inch from each edge, and I put one in the center of it, and then I just put one in the center of each of them on the side. Uh, then there's two quarter inch bolts that have um, the hex head fits in that extrusion and they slide in place and you just have to um, you know line them up with the holes in the gauge and basically that just allows that uh, extrusion to slide as you um, you know you tilt the gauge and stuff and you have to move it so that was you know just tighten them down and you can just loosen them and tighten them to slide it side to side so next thing there is there's a um, actual stop that goes in there that hits up against the edge of the miter gauge and that allows you to return to zero for the um, that measuring tape that we'll put on in a little while. So basically you just slide that in there, you slide the bolt head in there and there's a spacer and there's a uh, brass washer and you will adjust that later. Then there's a, uh, a, a metal tape measure with self-adhesive backing on it that comes with it and they tell you to just cut it at the one inch mark and it is kind of tough on scissors but you can cut it and then they tell you to cut the other end at the 25 inch mark and that gives you the clearance away from the blade um, so you basically just have to start peeling the backing off and um, there's a nice groove that it fits in and carefully try to keep it going straight through that groove um, if it gets a little bit going off to one side or the other, you can actually pull it back up and uh, reposition it a little bit until you get it just perfectly straight. And I just used the bottom edge of that groove there and, you know, it went in place and it laid down nice and flat, stuck really good. So that's going to um, be for setting the stop up. Then um, the next thing to do is put the stop together and there's a long bolt there and brass washer and then... Um, that extrusion has some, you know, extruded pockets in it to hold some uh, nylon or plastic bushings, and they actually have a cut or a little, little tab on them that goes in that uh, cutout in the extrusion there, and locks in place. They just have to push the bushings in there, and they go in easy, and um, then you put that bolt through. And the same thing with the, this other little mounting block. You, same bushings get used. Um, and they snap in the same way. They just push right in. And then there's just one more um, little stop or little little stop button or whatever they call it that goes in there too to keep everything from rocking when it's tightened down and put together. So you, then you just have to... Um, I get that together just slide it on that bolt there and there's another brass washer in the kit and then there's a um a nylock nut that goes on there uh, there's also a uh, nylon screw that that goes in the tap on the top of there and that holds the little um the little uh, alignment window for um setting your um your measurement up perfect just like a fine adjust on it so you uh, put that screw in and then just slide the, the plastic thing. You can see that has a red line on it for alignment. And just snug the screw up for now. And then there's one more T-bolt that goes up from the bottom there. And use that last plastic knob on that to lock it down. And all I did is I just took a uh, you know ratchet and a wrench. And just tighten that down until it was just started to snug up. So um... You know, with a little bit of friction in the movement of it so it wouldn't flop around. And it's really a nice tight fit. And it um, looks like it's going to work real good. So then it's, you know, really easy to slide that up into the top of that fence extrusion. That that T-headed bolt goes in there. And there you can see how it flips down and, um, you know, to be a good stop. And then it flips out of the way. Then you have to set that uh, that end stop that there it is right there that we put in before. Just uh, measure five eighths over from the blade, and then just tighten that up, and you know you have a repeatable thing. Then uh, basically they said to you know 
pick a measurement off the blade, which I picked up right around four inches there, and set the stop up and do a cut. So I set it up and I lined it at four inches. You can see I got that little red marker slid over and lined up too. So I um, just took a piece of scrap wood I had laying around and cut to one side and then um, nice you can just swing that stop down there and uh, you know it, it also has a place where you can break it off to add a three quarter inch waste board to that too so I just uh, put it up against the stop and then I'm gonna cut the other side and just take a measurement now um, I knew I wasn't quite perfect but yeah you know, I was off by a, about 70,000 I think it was 70 thousandths here. I just kind of eyeballed it. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to realign that. I'm going to slip that over um, 70 thousandths. And then uh, I'll move that pointer back to the zero again. And I'll do another test cut. And this time it was right on. So that's, you know, set for life pretty much now. So you can... Uh, you know, you can see it does slide nice. Um, it's got some nice features to it. Uh, I like that long extrusion with the stop. Um, the only thing is you've got 12 inches basically that you can uh, cut cross cut with it. Otherwise, once you back off, it gets kind of real wobbly. So um I may need to make a little something that sticks off the table there just so I can cut up to 16 inches or something like that. But, you know, basically it fits nice and tight in the slot and... Um, you can see how much longer that bar is than the the old one so it does i think it does guide you a little better and um with those five screws it really does slide in the slot nice and everything so like i said this old uh, miter gauge is going over on the band so i'm going to adjust the width of the slot for that one and uh, you know that'll stay with the saw over there so now i'm gonna they say it's set at the factory so i'm gonna start doing my first couple of cuts with it and um you know, kind of, kind of get a starting point. It should they say it should be, um, you know, exactly 90 degrees the way you get it. And, um, so I did a couple cuts and I checked them for square. And that, people are asking how that um, that new Amana blade cuts plywood. Well, I use plywood here just to show you that it does a um, really nice uh, splinter-free cut on plywood it's really um i'm pretty amazed at the blade it really does a good job so i um i checked them and they were off just a little bit so i decided to uh just run a 12 inch wide piece just to get a little bit better idea of you know how much how square it was or how square it wasn't i put a, a square on that and check that and um i could see that that actually was off by about uh I'm going to say about two to three thousandths across 12 inches. So um turns out that it's really, it's not perfectly cutting square. So then I just, uh, I took two more pieces of six inch wide. And I figured that what I do just to get a good idea is I just, um, just, you know, cut the end on and put an X on the corner where I cut it from. And, uh, well, first I checked it with a square and, um, I could see that it was just, just a hair off, um, so what I did is I went back and I cut another one and I figured to get a good idea of how much I'm off by. I'd uh, cut it, mark that corner and then flip it so they were back to back on a straight edge. So basically what I did is I just, uh, I used that, uh, that fence there, the straight edge and put the two boards against it um, with the cuts flipped. If you if you do it the same way you won't you won't see it but um and there you can see it's uh it's really not much it's probably probably a total of maybe about three thousandths maybe a little bit more than that and, it's, and then if you flip it back the other way you can see where it really looks like it's square but it's not because they're you know cut on the uh same side of the gauge so um i figured that i'd go back and uh just try to shift the top on the saw a little bit. I figured it might have been something to do with the saw, but um, I had lined it up when I got it, and it was a big mistake uh, loosening those bolts and trying to shift it some because um, actually it wasn't the saw that was off. It's the uh, it's a miter gauge, um, so I'll show you that in a second. But 
I wound up uh, trying to shift that and doing some cuts and stuff. And 20 minutes later, I was back to uh, setting it up again with an indicator, um, getting it back to square again um, where it was before I started. So I, uh, you know, I got an indicator and I got that slot miter slot parallel to the blade like it was when I set it up and tighten the top back down again now it turns out that if you look at this miter gauge see that brass pin there when you tighten that um see how much rock there is from side to side extra rock with that pin in place it was shifted slightly off the center of that pin when i tightened it it looks like and um you can't really notice it it's 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 pretty um, hard to notice, but it does show up on a 6 inch or 12 inch wide cut. So you really have to go back through and make sure that when you put that pin in that there's two arrows on the outside that you line them up also because that pin is not a good way to index this. But anyhow, I decided to set it up at 45 and um, so I decided, you know, I was going to do all the cuts in the same direction, I figured. Um, so what I did is I, I got a couple pieces of plywood and I they're all ripped to the same width and then I just um, did a cut on one end up against the stop to, to set the first cut and then I'm going to go back and cut the other end. So I thought this would be the best way to just see um, you know the accuracy of the 45 degree cuts and like I said when you put that pin in there don't rely on that um, before you tighten the handle make sure there's three arrows there make sure that all three of them are lined up with a line then I flip that around and you can see how nice that stop works um, you can flip it up when you're not using it or you can flip it down and I made sure to cut the um, you know the angles on the same side um, I didn't want to flip the gauge or anything I made sure that uh, any error would show up later when I put it together. So it does it does slide nice in the slot. Um, everything's working really good, and um, so far I'm pretty happy with it. So I got those pieces now. Now this is uh, just kind of shows you how square it was when I squared them up. I just took the four corners I cut off, but you can see how. Once you get those uh, three lines in line and you use it, um, it's dead nuts on. It's a, you know, it's a perfect cut. So I have no complaints about it when you do that. So I took those four pieces over to my uh, my board where I clamp up frames and stuff on, and just put or tried putting them together just to, you know, see what how the joints were. Um, it was a little bit of warpage in the plywood pieces, a little bit of a bend in it. So. Um, you can see that they're not quite laying flat, but um, they're pretty close. So I got that, uh, use those rubber band clamps that I did that video about that I made for my um, CNC router. Actually, I use them for picture frames too on this board. So um, just kind of lock that in place so I can get a, a look at the joints and um, the and there it is um you know the four the four miters were cut um pretty much they're all perfect you can see they uh you know nice and straight and um that blade does a wonderful job and the jig actually held it at the 45 and the only thing is that you can see there's a little bit of warp in that one the joints actually tight but the plywood's actually got a little bit of warp in it so you know basically um you just have to be careful and you can see that that shake in there when you lock it down um, any little bit of shake like that would be nice if they had made it a more positive detenner you know some a tighter pin in the holes or something like that but I guess manufacturing uh, tolerances must you know make it so they have to leave it sloppy if they had uh, you know if that was a nice tight fit this thing would be a perfect miter gauge um, and the way it is, it's still good. It just you just have to keep an eye on it when you tighten it. So, anyhow, I just thought I'd um, do a quick video about this, and uh, you know, just show you my findings with it. And um, you'll be seeing it in a lot of future videos to come. It's the first miter gauge I ever bought that I had to spend 10 minutes assembling, but um, actually it's a real nice miter gauge, and I really like that stop feature, and um, you know how that flips over out of the way so you can trim both ends of a board and um it looks like it's uh going to be a real good addition to the saw um you know time will tell how those little 
plastic set screws hold up there, but you know, I don't see it being a problem if you have to adjust them every once in a while. So otherwise it looks like um you know, it looks like a real nice piece of equipment. And you can see those two arrows on the outer side and that center arrow. You have to make sure they're all lined up with a um you know, a line on the other side before you lock it down and then it'll cut perfectly square. Seems like no matter what you buy anymore that nothing uh, is exactly perfect. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.